Hello everyone and welcome to week one of the philosophies of sex and love at Finlandia University. This is an online summer course that is writing intensive. I am Dr. Patricia Gross and I'm really excited to be here with you. Um, a little bit about me, I'm actually a philosopher as you should know because I'm teaching it, uh, but my one of my major disciplines is the philosophies of sex and love so I'm really excited to explore these concepts with you. The purpose of this particular video is to give you a little bit of an orientation about what's going on in week one. So in this video, we'll talk about the course, the the, the assignments for today, and we're going we're gonna to go over some concepts from the readings as well. Um, the lectures are, are supposed to be short. I'm not trying to get them to be very long, and they are not completely encompassing of everything that you're going to have to do in this class, right? Or a lot of what you're going to be doing is reading and thinking on your own, right? This is something that it's up to you to get the most out of this course by really delving into these readings. So let's get started, shall we? Um, our first unit this week, uh, our first unit in this course is called What is Love? And this is an important question, one that will take a long time to unpack. And I'm the one who designed this course, and I'm still unpacking it, right? But the first two weeks, we're going to be kind of lingering in this question of what is love, right? And I think that this is like the traditional philosophy question of like, what is something? What is it? What is life? That kind of thing. Uh, what is real? What is right and wrong? Um, philosophy tends to ask these sorts of questions that can sometimes be frustratingly open-ended, but the important thing is, I think, as you explore this question, is to see how deep this question is. It is a very complex question, and we are going to be, in part, just learning what the question even means. Um, so, oh, this is another welcome page. <laughs> this week one is actually titled, Hello. So you'll see on the syllabus, I'll go ahead and throw it up here. On the syllabus, um, which we went over in the last video, uh, on the units, so the units have their titles, and then each individual week has their names. So in unit one, uh, the first week is hello, and the second week is what is love. Um, and then you'll see, you know, in the other units, uh, while the units have a larger name, each week has a particular name of its own that's going to help us uh, focus what we're, uh, what we're thinking about. Um, so you can check that out as you wish. I'm like constantly editing things after it's already submitted. It's great. Um, okay, so we're in unit one, right? So here are some questions about the concept of love itself. What is it? Where does it come from? Why do we want it? Who do we want it with? Does it really exist? These questions and more will stay with us throughout our time in this course. But first, let's, dis let's discuss the assignments for this week. One of them is to watch the first episode of the Netflix series, What is Love? Or not What is Love, it's called uh, Love at First Sight. It's so crazy and I love it and I'm excited that you guys are going to watch it with me. Um, just really quickly though, the slides that I'm reading from, you can get here. Um, make sure that you download the slides because when you click on it like this, as I showed you in the last video, um, the slides don't actually show you the comments. The, the So I have included... Like most of what I'm saying here is some version of it's in the note form in the bottom. So make sure that you download it so that you can actually see that because I think it would be helpful for you. Um, certainly it's helpful for me. Uh, right, so let's talk about those assignments. In general though, just so you know, just to review, your grade assessment is 50-50. So it's 50% weekly discussion boards and 50% short essays. Your first short essay is due at the end of week two, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. So in week two, we'll talk about it. Um, but it's a four to five page essay due every two weeks, basically. But the discussion uh, threads are going to be really important. It's kind of like your attendance for this class. And you want to make sure that you're on time when you complete these discussion board assignments. So this slide has the assignments for this week. And I'll discuss what week one discussion board entails when we're closer to the end of this little mini lecture, right? But you have to read Desires, the introduction to the text that you're reading, Desires Dissonance. Um, it's actually page three, I think it's three to 13 or something like that. But um, you can, you see this here, but is this still like this? What's happening here? 
I, I edited this and it, yeah, I fixed it. Okay, good. You can see that. Um, so you have to have the text, but I know it's difficult for you to access the text right now and get it right away. So go ahead and buy the text, but, rem but I've included the first two chapters of the text that we're reading on the, on the website to help you out. Okay. Um, so make sure to make sure to read that. Um, so this is the first reading. Um, it, it ends on page 11. So it's actually page three to 11. There you go. I fixed it. Um, so you have this, this reading on page 3 to 11, Introduction, Desires, Dissonance by Sarah LaChance Adams, Chris Davidson, and Carolyn Lundquist in New Philosophies of Sex and Love, through Thinking Through Desire. You have to watch the first episode of the Netflix series Love is Blind and complete the week one discussion board. Again, that text, here's all the information. You need to buy that ASAP. But I again, I provided this week's readings to you as PDFs. So you will have to actually... Uh, make sure that you get this by week four, which is when you're going to have the next readings, I believe, uh, from this book. So it's important that you get this book as soon as possible, right? Um, and there's a couple copies in the textbook justice library that you can check out. Okay, so let's talk about the text itself. Um, you're going to have to look at the syllabus. So let's get to talking. All right, so this week you're reading the introduction of the book. The editors of this collection spent a long time uh, crafting an introduction that will help you understand what, where the rest of the text is going. Be sure to note which chapters discussed seem the most exciting to you. Let's read the passage here. Dissonance alerts us to theoretically rich contradictions, indicating spaces of conceptual ambiguity in what had previously seemed to be plain truths or common sense. Hence, when we choose to dwell with and think through the unfamiliar, we can become conscious of and begin to explore the deep significance of our intuitions and our pre-reflective experience and all their chaotic dynamism. The definition of the word dissonance is also pictured here. Dissonance itself means lack of harmony among musical notes or a tension or class resulting from the combination of two disharmonious, disharmonious or unsuitable elements. It is dissonance that will guide us through these readings, this, this semester, this term, and through our own ideas of what constitutes sex and love. Because so often when we think about sex and love, we have this sort of dissonance, right? This lack of harmony with what it ought to be, right? When you love someone you're not supposed to, for example, like you know you shouldn't, but you do. Or when you desire something that is not good for you, or maybe you desire something that is both good for you and not good for you. Maybe you have two loves at the same time. So these are all different kinds of questions that we're going to be exploring in this course. Dissonance is the, is the main thing here. Directly after the quote provided in this last slide, uh, bleh, sorry, directly after the quote provided on the last slide is the paragraph, is this paragraph. Let's read it now. The chapters in this volume dwell with, desire, with desires dissonance. And in, do, and in so doing, they uncover insights that are as intriguing as they are unsettling. Desire is the location of mystifying and invigorating tensions, the shifting nexus of apparent oppositions, deliberative reason and unformulated experience, power and resistance, one's present becoming and one's past being, cultural knowledge and embodiment, yearning and explicitly held values, deception and love of truth, exploitation and friendship, spontaneity and premeditated design, and so on. Seeming opposition often indicates a unique and vital relation. You'll see here that desire suddenly comes up into the discussion, and I know I just mentioned it right before. Desire is a strange in-between thing in much of philosophy of sex and love. Do you need desire to have sex or love? Is it an integral part of these activities, or is it something separable? If separable, how so? If not, why not? You'll need to continue to hold these questions close to your heart as we continue reading this semester. This slide, I, I titled this slide, Real Love. The last quotation I'd like to focus on from the reading this week is here. Let's read it together. These chapters are so unique in that they place more emphasis on explaining the workings of our normative assumptions than on arguing for positions of right and wrong. We wonder what certain ethical imperatives reveal about a worldview. For example, we ask what the cultural status of monogamy discloses regarding our beliefs about real love and fidelity. The authors of these chapters do not dictate the outcomes of ethical inquiry, 
Instead, they ask what perspectives and prejudices are hidden within our predominant cultural mores. You hear in this passage that ethics, the study of how we know and come to know what is right and wrong, amongst other things, is front and center in inquiries concerning sex and love. This is due to the very nature of the topic. Sex and love is often necessarily outward driven. driven. It is something we do to others and to ourselves at the same time. They are very dangerous forces indeed. Okay, now let's dis- discuss the discussion board for week one. I know I haven't discussed the viewing that you're going to be doing, which is Love is Blind, right? But we're going to talk about that in our discussions of what you're going to be doing in week one. So the week one discussion board. Okay, let's review the discussion board assignments for this week together. So here's what it actually says. It's on the slide. But we can also just let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So again, um, you have your reading that you can click on here. If you click on Love is Blind Netflix, you'll go directly to the Netflix uh, page. I've never done this before. It kind of makes sense though. Like I didn't think to actually link, (laughs) link it. Um, but you can definitely, uh, go ahead and, you know, watch it here. I think you can get one, um, like you can get like a week a 30 day free trial. So you can check that out. Um, let me click off of those. So here, here you go. Complete week one discussion boards. You'll see that there is a due date of May 22nd, but there are things that are due beforehand. So And on the discussion boards, you'll see that I've also, I always like to include, you know, in multiple places what you have to do, right? So you have to read it. You have to read this text. You have to watch this thing. You're listening right now to this lecture, right? And you also have to complete the discussion board activities. Um, Notice that they're due on Thursday and on Friday. So let's see what that means. Welcome to the discussion board for week one. This is a writing intensive course. As such, you'll have to do much more writing in the form uh, in the form of essays. Sometimes your weekly discussion boards will have writing assignments that are related to preparing for your short essay that is due for the week. Sometimes your weekly discussion board will have you answer a series of questions, and other times you'll be asked to provide a short presentation on a piece of assigned media. This week we're introducing ourselves. Once you read the text, I've provided the PDF of the chapter, as you may not have access to it yet, and watch the episode of Love is Blind, you must prepare a short presentation. This presentation can be through PowerPoint, Prezi, Google Slides. You can upload a short video that you of yourself that you recorded with your phone. It's up to you. This is a very, this is whatever is easiest for you. Um, here are the presentation requirements for week one. You must introduce yourself. Tell us what philosophy courses you've had and what made you decide to take this course on the philosophy of sex and love. Explain what the editors of our course text mean when they say the chapters in this volume dwell with desire's dissonance and in so doing uncover insights that are so intriguing as they are unsettling on page three, the first page of the introduction. You'll need to explain the relationship between the reading for today and the episode of Love is Blind you watched. And then you have to tell us what reading on the syllabus you're most interested in. And I'll give you a hint on that. The reading itself gives an overview of all those readings that we're going to be reading. So you can see which one you're most interested in through that. And finally, uh, you must answer the simple question. To you, what is love? That's the the name of the game. What is it to you? That's what we're interested in hearing. Um, These presentations are all due on this discussion board by Thursday at 11.59 p.m. So by Thursday at midnight, basically. Um, And so you can, the way you submit it is you just hit reply and then you just submit the link or whatever you need to do. Um, and then you must view and respond to each of your classmates posts by Friday at 1159 PM. So that's a quicker turnaround, right? You know, everything's due by Thursday and then you have to respond by Friday. Um, there's some additional requirements here that you can check out on your own time. There's some guidelines for your post link, post length, um, citations are, you know, so if you quote or paraphrase anything that's not coming out of your own brain, provide a link to it. Right, you can just provide a hyperlink. And you know, you know how to get a hyperlink, right? You just copy. Uh, I just did Control C, but another way to edit, edit, copy, right? And then you know, if I wanted to include it right there, that was Control V, but I can also edit and paste, right? That's that's. It's very simple to do that. And if you need a little bit more um, education on that, just let me know. Um, so make sure to always cite, right? You don't want to go to college jail for plagiarizing on something as simple as this, uh, or on anything really. 
Um, I've got a self-assessment rubric that's here to help you to like, you know, if you're questioning like, okay, what is it? Am I doing the right thing? Check out this rubric. It's there to help. And then the learning objectives for this discussion board assignment and all discussion board assignments is, is here at the bottom. And if you click on this, say that, you know, all the information that you have of what you have to do is on this page and it's kind of hard and you want to work offline because you don't have as much access to the internet. Well, I've included the actual prompt for the discussion board here. So every bit of information that's on the website is actually here of what the assignment actually is. And I've done that because, you know, sometimes it's easier to download it. Like you check it on Monday, you download it, you, you have this typed up, and then you can do this presentation offline or whatever, and then you can come back and submit it, right? And again, you're going to be replying, and that's how you're going to do the submission. Um, this video is actually going to be um, is going to be on the website soon, um, and I'll show you where it's going to be. <laughs> I'm showing you how to find the videos and all videos. It's going to say, "Watch Week One Lecture from Dr. Gross." That's what it's titled on the website on our course website. It's going to be on my YouTube page, and I've decided to make these public just because it might be easier for you to find them. If you ever just need to Google, it's called Gross Philosophy is my is my uh, YouTube page and so if you have any questions or comments or concerns about any of the assignments this week just let me know I'm really looking forward to what you have to say um, the rest of the slides pertain to week two so I'm gonna stop the video here see the next see that's week two um, and so I'm gonna stop the video here and probably record the week two video <laughs> immediately after I want you guys to have a really great week I'm really looking forward to hearing from you about what you feel concerning love you know I want to know who you are I know a lot of you already but just because we've noticed you've had my class before doesn't mean there isn't more to you to know I mean that's what I love about being a teacher I get to learn so much about the world through you um all right I should probably stop talking now <laughs> all right I'll talk to you guys really soon um have a wonderful wonderful week I'm looking forward to reading your discussion board presentations bye